Welcome back everyone. In this lesson we're going to be setting up our project and first of all our project file structure. Then we're going to move on and set up each of our scenes. So to begin let's create our folders. We've already got our photon and scenes folder right here so let's create another folder and this one is going to be called prefabs. Now this is where we're going to be storing all of our different prefabs that we're going to be using. Let's also make a folder called materials to store our materials in and then another folder for our models. This project also comes with some included um, files and some of those are models that we're going to be using. So these models are the ammo box, barrier, building, force field, health pack, platform and terrain. So I'm just going to drag those in right here. Um, apart from that we also then want to create a, another folder here and this folder is going to be called our scripts and this is where we're going to be storing all of our different scripts that we're going to be creating and then another folder for the resources now in the resources folder I'll get into more detail about this later but this is where we need to put prefabs that we want to instantiate over the network with Photon um, yep, I'll go into this in more detail later on when we actually start instantiating those but for now let's create our next folder and this folder is going to be called textures now the only texture we're really going to be having is going to be our crosshair, which is a, another included, um, which is another included asset in the project files. So we can just drag that in. And by default, let's actually just set this up right now. Let's click on this crosshair right here, and we want to change the texture type from default to sprite 2D and UI, and just click on apply like so. And that's all we have to do. And that's it for the folders. Now let's go into our scenes folder and we want to create two new scenes. The first scene we want to create is going to be our menu scene, which is going to be where we can um, create lobbies, join rooms, and then start the game. And then we want our next scene to be the actual game. And this is where all the action is going to be taking place. And let's actually open up the menu scene right now. And inside of here, we can go into the game view, have a look. Um, let's actually set up the camera as well right now. So let's click on the main camera and we want to change its projection from perspective to orthographic. The reason for that is because since we're working with UI and 2D aspects in this scene, we don't really need um, depth because we're not really trying to capture distance of 3D objects. So we can set that to orthographic to make it much easier. And we'll actually change the background because we don't really want this skybox background for a menu. So what we can do is click on uh, clear flags up here and change that from skybox to solid color and this color can then be changed here and let's change this to a sort of greeny blue color something like this alright and with that done let's now save that and go into our game scene where we are going to create our level so first thing let's go to our um, models folder and we want to drag in the terrain model right here into the scene now it doesn't have a texture on it just yet but before we do that let's actually set up the hierarchy here a bit let's right click and go create empty and we're going to call this one let's just zero this out we're going to call this one underscore map now this is just going to be an empty game object that's going to be holding all of our uh, all of the objects that are related to the map all of the structures and stuff like that just so it's a lot neater here in the hierarchy and we can look through it and understand what object is for what thing so Let's drag our terrain into the map object right here. And let's actually make a texture for this terrain. So let's go to our materials folder that we just created. We'll right click here, go create uh, material, and let's call this terrain. Um, to apply a material, we can simply drag this on like so. And let's change this material over here. Let's set the smoothness all the way down. And let's change the albedo color to a green. So we'll go green here. Um, yeah, something like that. You may notice though that the shadows look quite dark and not really that good. Um, this is just how it is by default, but what we can do to easily fix this is go over to the lighting panel. Um, if you don't have the lighting panel, you can go up to window here, go rendering, and then lighting settings. And once we're on here, all we need to do is just click on the generate lighting button down here at the bottom right. Just click that should take barely any time and there we go it's done we have our shadows and everything and it looks all good now um, since we're using real-time lighting we don't really have to do that again unless you do want to optimize it but for us we're fine just like this so with our terrain we can now 
it maybe might look a bit too bright that green so let's change this to something a bit more green like that I reckon that green looks good so we'll keep it like that now the thing with our terrain right now is that it looks pretty good it looks pretty much the size but the problem is we want to be using um, unity units we want to be scaling everything within um, the units inside of unity and that is just makes it a lot easier for the physics to work as we want and just makes things everything you know to scale so what we can do now is just right click here just do just for a reference go 3d object cube and this cube here if we zero this out is one by one meters now if we compare that to the rest of the terrain it makes the terrain look quite small in comparison to that one meter cube so let's get our terrain here and let's scale it up a bit. Let's set the scale here to maybe 10 by 10 by 10. With that done, we can actually delete that cube. And let's start on actually adding in our buildings and all about that. So let's go to our models folder again. And we want to drag in the building asset right here, just like that. Let's create a texture for it by going back to our materials folder. We'll create a new material and we'll call this one building. Let's apply it to the building here. And we'll set the smoothness back down to zero again. And for the albedo, albedo, let's set this to maybe a sort of dark brown sort of color like that. Yeah, something like that. There we go. At the moment, though, if we click on a building, we'll see that we can actually don't we actually don't have a collider on it, so people can walk through the walls, they can shoot through the walls, but we don't want that. So we're going to be adding a component here, and the component we want to add is going to be a mesh collider. And what this does is this makes it so that basically the mesh is a collider. It's not necessarily a box collider or a sphere collider. It just has it so that it, you can't walk into the actual object itself. So the collider covers the entire object. There we go. Um, for this building, let's actually then go to our assets window into our prefabs and let's save, let's actually save this as a prefab so we can easily use it later on. Um, I'm just, yep, we'll just keep it called at building and let's drag it into here. Uh, we'll go original prefab and there we go. We have our building asset our building prefab saved. Let's actually drag this into our map object as that's where it belongs. Let's add in our next uh, environment model which is going to be the barrier and this is just going to be a sort of shield of protection that the players can hide behind. Let's again add a mesh collider to cover that and let's actually change this default white material to something else so we'll create a new material in our materials folder and we'll call this one barrier. We'll apply that Set the smoothness down to zero, and for the albedo, let's make this a sort of dark, dark grey like that. Yeah, something like that. Okay, that barrier is done, so let's drag that into our prefabs folder as well. We'll make a prefab of that, uh, original prefab. And the last thing we need to make is going to be our platform. This is just going to be another structure that the players can climb up on top, look out for, look out from the top of and shoot other players from. So let's actually reuse some of our materials because what we can do is for this platform here we can set this as the building material there and for the centerpiece we can set that as the barrier. So there we go, we can reuse materials like that. Um, you can create new materials if you want for this but I reckon we just keep it with this sort of theme like that which looks pretty nice. So yeah, with these three things here let's actually first of all go to prefabs and save this uh, platform as a prefab like so. And actually we need to add in our colliders for this as well. So inside of here, we can select the cube and the other cube here for both of the different models. Go add component, mesh collider, click on the platform here, we can drag that back into the prefabs folder, save as a prefab. And there we go. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to go around, I'm going to design the map. You can choose where you want to place them, how many different objects you want, but just customize your map. Put things where you want and yeah, so I'll be back once my map is finished. So there we go, I've got my map complete. I just put the houses, I put the buildings around the different areas here, up, you know, up on this little hill here, in different little areas, and mixed around that with the towers as well as the barriers. Something we also have to do that I just remembered is actually add a collider to our terrain, because otherwise we'll just fall right through the floor. So selecting the terrain, let's just add, com add a component and add a mesh component, just add a mesh collider, just like all the other ones and that's all we need to do. In the next lesson we're going to be starting on our network manager which is going to be actually connecting us to the Photon servers and allowing us to create rooms, join rooms and all the rest. So I'll see you all then.